So in today's video, I'm going to explain how we create this hexagon texture or this design on this pavement that you see in a lot of areas. So we have designed here and it gradually fades away into the basic pavement just here and it goes to the edge. So I'm going to jump straight into it and tell you how I created this scene. So the scene itself is composed of some forest uh, planting like this tree and this grass. We have some benches and then we have some people just scattered along the side. Now the area we're going to work in is just here. So if I go to my rail clone object, which is what we're going to be using to scatter this object, in here I have my splines that I'm going to be using, which is here, this is the spline. And then also here I have this master surface. So we're going to be using this as the surface that the hexagon shapes are going to stick to. So, and then down here we have our object. So if I go here, we have our hexagon object right here. And this is what we're going to be using to scatter. If I hit F4, you can see there's a slight bevel just there, or chamfer, whichever way you want to describe it. So let's jump into it and start scattering this object. So I've hidden everything that we don't need to see. So the very first thing we're going to do is go to the rail clone and create our rail clone object. Right click and go into modify. Now we're going to click this little pencil here and open up the style editor. And when you're creating these, most times you'll need a segment, you need a spline, and if you're using a, a surface that is on a different level or it fluctuates, you're going to need a surface. So now let's select the object. So I'm going to select my hexagon shape here. I'm going to select my spline. And I'm going to select my surface. Once I have all those selected, we aren't going to use the linear array 2S in Rail Clone. They actually have one in here. So if we go to generators, and we go to, it's actually on floors, it's not in pavements, whichever, it doesn't really matter. And we have a hexagon floor macro, and we're going to click and drag this in. Now, once we bring this spline in here, to our clipping area, so now you're going to put your object into the segment. Now, if I zoom in here, it's going to look a bit funky, but that's only because it's on adaptive to save your frame rate. So, and if I click mesh, you're going to see we have our actual mesh. Now I'm going to go back to adaptive and the one thing we need to do is we need to put this onto a surface. But if you click here, you'll see there are no surface options. So we need to click this, right click, macro, edit. Then we go over here. We have a surface here. We need to pop this out, macro, and then click input. So now we have an input. Go back to our top level. And now you can see we have a surface. So we can get this and plug it straight in there. And just like that, we have our macro done and dusted. Now all we need to worry about are the materials and how to get that effect. So I've created a material. It's a multi-sub object material. So that means I have two materials here being plugged into one and two. The only difference is, these are the exact same materials. The only difference is I've after making this a bright red just so we can see the effects. So once you have that, we can select here, select our object and apply it to our rail clone object. Now, if you hit render, this is what you're gonna see we're not gonna see that other material come true. So we need to go back to Rail Clone Macro and change some things. So back in our Rail Clone object, we need to tell this object to use two different materials. And to do that, we need to go to Material ID and drag this out. Now, what I'm gonna do before I click this together is I need to select this, right click, and I need to export parameters for, the t for this to work. So I need to go from and to and click OK. So now we have both those options. So now we need to use another macro. So if you go to macros, go to arithmetic, arithmetic, I should say, and go to gradient probability and pop this in here. Now this one will use the value two and one and it will gradually create that gradient we're looking for. So we need to tell this to go from and we need to tell this to as well. We can then plug this into our segment like so and plug our object back into this segment here. So now if I hit render, we have that gradient. So how do we change where this gradient is? So what position, like say if I want it in the middle, well over here, this works all the way here would be zero and moving all the way up here would be one. So if I put this to 0 0.5 and then hit render, you're gonna see this now starts in the middle. So let's say you didn't want this transition to be so tight. You didn't want, you want this to gradually fade more this way and you want this to gradually fade more this way. Well, that's where the transition range comes in. So if I increase this say to 0.7 and hit render, you'll see now that pushes 
0.7. So I think it's 0.35 this way and 0.35 this way. So all together, it would be a bit around 7. So once you, if say if you are happy with that, obviously I don't want this to be bright pink. I want to change this to something, a nicer color. So let's do that now. So to change this color, we need to go back to the material. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually delete this and I'm going to plug this back into my diffuse. So if I was to render this, we're just going to have the exact same material. So we don't want that. So luckily rail clone comes with a great uh, map. So if I go to maps, general and go to rail clone color, we have this map which can change the color from a, with a gradient color. So what do I mean by that? So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here. I'm going to plug this map into our default, plug this into our map one, and then I'm going to plug this into our diffuse. So if I hit H on that, just to make it a bit smaller, I'm going to hit render now and show you what that did in its default settings. And as you can see, it's done nothing. <laughs> so what you need to do is you need to go into the rail clone object and change a few things. So if I, I switch this on, we have that. Then scroll down and hit enable here. Now you see color has been introduced into this texture and it's changed values based on this gradient. So you can change this to whichever colors you want. You can change it to color. You can also change this to say multiply and you get everything darker kind of look. So if we were to keep this on, let's say color, we could then change this say to something like white here and black at the top and click OK, and then switch this to multiply. And then you get that kind of look. So you can change this to whatever color you want. The one thing I would say is you might not want to have ones that dark. So what you do is you select here and you just bring this down ever so slightly to something that's not completely black. You could also, if you wanted to go to the white and bring this up a bit so it's not completely white, and then you get more of a natural look to it. And that's pretty much it. So if I unhide everything and now hit render, and once you hit render, this is what we have. So we have this nice gradual fade off, you, you could call it, from this heavy texture here, eventually fading to the natural color in here. And that's as easy as it can be. And if you want to get creative, you can even do something like this, which I did earlier, and you get a bit of curl. It's a bit crazy, but it's just something you can do. You could get in a different texture on this side, gradually fading away, and the other texture takes over it on this side. I hope this has been helpful and you can, not, you can use it for other things. It, it's not just the hexagon. This is just one implication I thought would be pretty good for. So I hope the video has been good and maybe go ahead and make one yourself.